Is that who I think it is? Is Joy still on the freak beat? Can someone give me Joy Mikado? That's him. We need to get back into New York. Why? Where have you been? L.A. There's phone footage of him standing in the middle of sunset shouting at Wolverine, Spider-Man, and Captain America. Only, they, they're not there. He's talking to thin air. What? Word is that he has D.I.D. What they used to call multiple personality disorder. He's got a great story. I was told he used to be a mercenary. A real bastard. And the one time he actually stands in front of innocent people, this was a dig in Egypt, some hidden crypt. He gets shot dead by his buddies. So there he is, dead, huh? At the foot of this statue of Khonshu, an Egyptian god, and he gets up again. There's this old hooded cloak draped on the statue, huh? He puts it on and beats the crap out of everybody. Now Khonshu, he has four different aspects. So the mercenary, he comes back to the States, becomes the Moon Knight, and two other people. He's got four different personalities now. Disassociative identity disorder. He's completely nuts. Cut a guy's face off once. If he's back in town, you need to talk to, uh... uh the, the, the mayor created that new sweeper squad for homicide, specifically for freak beat stuff. He's on that squad. Flint. There's a Detective Flint on the sweeper squad. Talk to him. I've got a question. Why would you wear white and a giant cape that looks like a moon if you're fighting crime and hunting faces at night? Easy. He likes people to see him coming. Because he's crazy. Because he's crazy. Correlate police radio capture with map and GPS. Show me the last four incidents in incident folder SL2. Include all folder events in a perimeter. All right, then. Driver, go to new event location. Town speed, park. Confirmed. Well now. Sir, sir, that's Moon That's Mr. Knight, a concerned citizen. No, it's Moon No. If that man were identified by the name of a dangerous vigilante, then I'd have to follow a very specific set of standing orders to restrain him, using whatever force was necessary. So this is a thing we do. To the police on the streets, that's Mr. Knight. Are we clear on that, son? Hello, Mr. Knight. What do you think we're looking at, Detective Flint? Welcome to our crime scene. We've got a slasher, again. One of the first cases we ever worked together was a slasher. Should have known a slasher would bring you out again. This isn't that. Slashers are bad enough. Attacking people who only wanted to travel at night. But this one's different. The victim's a strong man. All the victims were strong men. Bouncers, security, gym rats. And they all have bits cut off. Good sharp knife, real Jack the Ripper stuff. Now, look at the cuts, Flint. This isn't a surgeon's work. Sharp knife, but not exactly medical level operations. Taking trophies? Or lunch? Maybe. But the kill wound tells me things. No real medical training. But someone taught your perp how to murder people. Which makes me wonder why he worked here. He's going after a particular type, but he's not trailing them. Pay attention to Mr. Knight. He thinks in a very particular way. This is a tight spot. Why did he wait here? Who said he did? 
There's nothing to connect the Vix. Slashers are opportunistic, but your purpose... You must be surveilling. Maybe during the day, or... He's picking his Vix for their size, but he's fighting like a wounded soldier. It's an ambush point. That's something you'd know about, Mr. Knight? He's not traveling far. He's working in a prescribed radius. I need maps. Perhaps you'd like to expand? Now for my colleagues. The slasher Flint mentioned was classic. Opportunistic. Within a preferred territory. This one is pulling planned ambushes within a personal kill zone. That means... several things. Including that he must have a hide. Night or not, he's not walking far carrying fresh human organs. And I have the feeling he can't walk far anyway. He? He. Weight distribution, height, and there's something wrong with his heel. Hmm. And a dense part of town, too. You know what's as deep as the Chrysler building is high? No. What? Everything under Manhattan. There's tunnels a thousand feet under us. Wait. Mr. Knight, this is all real interesting, but you're not a police officer, so you can't just- Officer, I appreciate your perspective. But I'm talking about going underground into the hide of a highly trained killer. Which will be where he keeps all his weapons. I'd prefer to do that part for you. You're crazy. It's been said. Also, I hate to be the one to point this out, but wearing a white suit, he's kinda gonna see you coming. <laughs> That's the part I like. and the self-driving cars and all the other tools. The entire return to New York, paid for with laundered old blood money. Becoming sane by spending what the crazy days paid him. That's how you did it. Pull yourself up a rope and slide down another on an abseil kit. Hard on the arms, easy on the legs. Well, this is a totally sane thing to do. this noise. You're running some heavy machinery down here. Ha <laughs> ha, sure. Important machines. I hear myself think sometimes. The noise is in my bones, but that's okay. He where to take me out? You armed? Not anymore. I came down here to learn your story. My story? I'm a soldier. I'm an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. And I'm down here to get better. You were injured in the field? An IED blew the crap out of me, and they wouldn't fix me. Just said I wasn't fit for service and threw me out. Look at me. Look at me now. I found all the old medical stuff they wouldn't use on me because it's not right or illegal or whatever. And look at how much better I am. I mean, hell, when I'm done, they're gonna have to take me back. They look crazy not to. No need for weapons, soldier. So, you were killing healthy people for supplies. Right. I mean, who does all that training and then does nothing useful with their bodies? These are people who actually know the names of their muscles, but do they sign up 
who work to get into an agency and serve their country? Hell no. Perfectly useful muscles and organs going to waste. Every time I go on a supply run, I get better. I have to be better. So I've got this straight. You go up, you hide, you watch and track fit people, and then you kill them. Take pieces of them down here, and paste them onto your body with obsolete exotic medical machinery. And you think this is the best use of their lives, and your time and skills. No offense, buddy, but you're a mall underground wearing a white suit and a bag on your head. Fair point. And you're unarmed. And you're gonna die down here. I've died before. It was boring, so I stood up. I don't know, man. I think you could have had things I need. Did you think you were going to drag me out of here? Give me to the cops? Or back the shield? I know you mass types. I could, but I have to tell you. You don't know me. You've never met anyone like me before. You prey on innocent travelers at night. That's all I care about. All I'm doing is stopping you. As simply and completely as possible. So how are you gonna stop me? I stopped you two minutes ago. Look down. Too much noise in here. You didn't hear it bounce off the wall. It looked like it was important. I wonder what would have happened if you'd actually been in a fight. Instead of hiding your lumpy ass behind some garbage and stabbing people in the back from cover. Let's find out. <laughs> Not good enough, soldier. Look, Doctor, I appreciate the time you spent, but I'm not comfortable with this. I was at a low point when I hired no, you. No, Mr. Spectre. You were at a lucid point. That is why you paid your fee in advance. You knew you would slip back. The good news is that you don't have dissociative identity disorder. I'm not certain what barbers and fakirs you previously consulted with, but you do not catch DID simply by pretending to be other people for a while. If that were true, we would be under an epidemic of soap opera actors putting bags on their heads and cutting people's faces off. No? Not that that would be uninteresting to me. I'm sure that following your experiences, you have read extensively about Konshu. I found it particularly resonant that Konshu is said to have four aspects. Pathfinder, Embracer, Defender, and the Watcher of Overnight Travelers. And in your most violent moments, Konshu's vengeful secret aspect the one who lives on hearts. The bad news, Mr. Spectre, is that you have brain damage. I believe you were indeed raised from the dead by an outer-terrestrial entity and remade to some extent by that entity's operations. You are made to be driven by Conscious chosen agency. You bring vengeance to those who would harm travelers by night. You cycle through those four aspects, and your brain, struggling to define what has happened to it, seeks to apply identities to them, whether that be Mark Spector, Stephen Grant, and Jake Lockley, or Wolverine, Spider-Man, and Captain America. Your brain has conjured them to explain what has happened to you. You are not insane. Your brain has been colonized by an ancient consciousness from beyond space-time. Smile!
Jane, it's dark outside. Go to hell home. Yeah, yeah. Time to go home, Alan. Time to pretend there's something there. My name is Mr. Cape to you. And if you ever question my decisions or credentials again... It's Oleg. Are you screening my calls? Well, don't. It impedes the flow of capital. Have a great night, Miss Reed. Pizza, Prosecco, cats on the internet, okay? And it's time for me to leave. Thanks for listening. Neil, you must leave for your doctor's appointment now. <laughs> I want the take from Somalia on my desk in the morning. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> time for my little look at the world. Then, time to go home. Hello, world. I will put you on your knees right here and shoot you through the top of your head. Is that clear? Yes, that's what I said. You want money? I cause money to happen to you. I don't think we are done, Joe. We were done ten minutes ago, sir. Can't wait. So excited. It was a night like this when they left him to die. Make dinner happen. Home in 30. Questioning my competence after all the things I've done. I am the man who makes the thing happen. Abandoned in a foreign country. No contact, no support, no way out. I told you what you need to do to secure your Yemeni holdings. That was the whole meeting, guys. The constant entertainment of having cancer. Thanks. See you way too early tomorrow. No explanation. Bought expensively. Used for years. And thrown away in one mysterious second. I'm paid to provide solutions. I listened to your uninformed opinions on those solutions as a courtesy. No, son. I really can't. Not tonight. Doctor's appointment. It doesn't matter what it's for. There could be only one response. Sorry, bad day. I love you. I'm not paid by you, but by the people who pay you. And they hired me away from really serious people. Yes, son. That's right. The appointment is because of my farting. They should have it back. All nine of them. The entire Special Operations Group. Who obtained and directed and discarded him in the field. He imagined one final, sudden, short glimmer of amusement in their minds before the bullet met the bone. Gonna be a good night. Gonna start in 20 minutes. That he was doing this last job for free. Night's the night. First night of the rest of our lives.
Go to tracking mode. Stay within lifeline distance. Release. enough. Not yet. Why can't I hit you? I'm not real. They dissolved the company, left me out there to die in the field and went and got new jobs on Wall Street. They paid me, used me to change the course of countries and history. And now they help banks. It may not have been a good life, but it was my life. They took it. So I took theirs. One life! <laughs> There were nine of us in the special operations group. I had a last minute late meeting, didn't leave work on time. We left the global security field and retired to large financial houses to make money. He was a tool, a gun with the numbers filed off, dropped off in a street of Beirut or Mogadishu or Tripoli. Guns aren't supposed to come back and punish their owners. I suppose his gamble was just what we taught him. Guns are power. The distant projection of death is power. That's why we all changed careers. We learned differently. The bank always wins. Where's that coming from? Where's what coming from? That music. Reminds me of something from when I was a kid. What, like someone tapping two dinosaur bones together? <laughs> no one would believe you quit stand-up comedy to settle down with me, right? Seriously, like a, a music box. You can't hear that?
Yes, Detective Flint. This is Mr. Knight. Your spree hitters just appeared for the third time. I see them. Who knew that we're still punk gangs? Kind of vintage. Hey, fun's over. Jumping out at night and beating people for kicks is... Ah, oh, the hell with it. You're not even listening. Well, that was different. I don't understand why I couldn't touch them. Of course you do, my son. They are ghosts. You know full well that the angry dead can reach out and touch the living. I did. Okay, fine. Ghosts are randomly attacking people in downtown Manhattan at night. They can touch me, and I can't touch them. What am I supposed to do? Sprinkle holy water over downtown? Exercise Spring Street? For as long as we have been together, you have collected items from ancient Egypt. A civilization of the dead as much as of the living. A people who mapped the afterlife. A people that clothed their dead for the world beyond. And sought always to touch the untouchable. You possess all kinds of armor and a remnant for fighting the living. How can you not have garments for fighting the dead? I don't even remember buying most of this. again. Here's the thing. I hate ghosts. Match my speed. Pursuit mode on the deck. Three hundred feet. Hunting mode. Attack of conscience. It can happen. 
Did you sit here with a childhood music box? Waiting for your fellow gang members to come back? Wouldst thou like out and prize with that? Do not bring food into my car. You knew Dr. Peter Aron, Dr. Skelton? I did. I know he worked with you before his death. I contacted Detective Flint. The newspapers said you speak to him? And he arranged this meeting, yes. How can I help? I work in sleep research. Uh, Peter was something of a mentor to me. You're not continuing on his work, I hope. There were reasons why we knew each other, and those reasons contributed to his death. I know you and Peter dealt with neurological attack during sleep. I don't see how it can be the same thing, but... What we dealt with? was a man called Robert Markham, who had a viral infection that caused him genetic issues. Peter gave him an experimental treatment that reacted with the infection and caused some kind of mutation. You have to remember, there was a time where things like this weren't controlled the way they are today, and mutants popped up on pretty much a daily basis in New York. Uh, all of my patients are having the same dream. I mean, that's not even possible. And it's driving them insane by inches. Now, I'm hoping Peter gave you some special insight into dream attack, because... What kind of sleep research, Dr. Skelton? Uh, mm, sleep is a process that allows the brain to remove toxins from its tissue via the lymphatic system. We are studying the dream state in relation to neurotoxic load, protein activation, and lymphatic processing. I wouldn't expect you to know what any of that means. Hmm. Let me see your facility. Let me see your patients. Mm, look, Peter never disclosed exactly what you did together. But I know you're not precisely qualified to study somnological subjects. I am. I am precisely qualified. Dreamers are people who travel at night. That is my specialist subject. It's owned by the university. You take what you're given. My patients were here. All gone now, of course, until this is solved. We were attempting to induce lucid dream states and guiding the dream's physical mechanics through chemical messaging. Everyone was on drips and sensors. Is there an empty room? Uh, just, just the one. Uh, we don't use it. If I'm honest, it stinks. God only knows what the previous owners were like. Can it be locked from the inside? Yes, but as I say, it's... I'll take it. What are you intending to do? Sleep. The phenomenon is hyper-local. It's this building. So I intend to let the enemy get a good look at me. So I can get a good look at them. That's your plan. It occurs to me that you might already be insane. Hmm? Me too. Do you sleep here? No, I'm a night owl. I monitor my subjects while they sleep, and I sleep through the day. Will any of them come here tonight? Have you been listening? They're all in hospitals now. One of them bit through her own fingers while asleep and didn't wake from it. 
Once we got her to wake, she started screaming about needing to escape her own body. That's just the most extreme expression of a motive shared amongst all the subject's dreams. It's the same dream, which isn't possible. Even the most mysterious psychoactives cannot report the same vision in a hundred percent of test subjects. I'm just... I'm at my wit's end. And then I remembered Peter's experience with Markham. Go to your office. I have to go to work now. Konshu, I know you can hear me. Put me to sleep. Got you too! <laughs> Let go, damn it! Your brain is under attack, just like the others! Shut up! <laughs> what are you doing? Waking up. <laughs> no. One of the 
first test subjects. Off the books. I found him on Craigslist. I found out too late that he had some kind of fungal infection in his brain that was killing him. He died in the dream state. I, I couldn't have anyone find out. I wrapped him up and put him in the floor. Just for now, just until- Look at him. Down there in the damp, rank with whatever crap you were putting into him. His brain sporulated. You've been breathing in his dreams. Hello. Get lost! I confiscated this from a man in Egypt who tried to take something away from me. I was quite upset with him. I'm told that he still passes shards of his own ribcage when he goes to the bathroom. Now then, you have taken someone away from their home. I'm not interested in the politics of crime families, so don't even try to justify it. You took someone who was traveling at night, on their way home from a school event. You don't do that in New York City. How many people are holding that person in there? A dozen? Maybe more. Where's your abductee? Fifth floor! Of a sixth floor building. I presume your friends are pretty much spread out. Uh, I guess. All right then. May as well go through the front door. Ah! over the door not a clue that we're closed what are you supposed to be the one you see coming real money, and it's not like I have a job. Second floor. Why the fuck? Third floor. I was trying to take a nap. That's not helping. <laughs> Fourth floor. Fifth floor. Come out wherever you are, and don't go downstairs. It's not safe. Not safe! Go! 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 Ah! 
pretty sure my gun has better reach than your bat. But I love this bat. And you owe me a truncheon. And you can't kill me. You could kill her, it's true. But what saves your life after she's dead? Everyone already thinks the kid's dead. That loss is accepted. Have you accepted yours? Are you ready to die today? You could use that gun on her now. But she's the only thing keeping you alive. Make your call. Hello, Scarlet. I guess I must look pretty weird. Yeah. My name's Mr. Knight. The police will be here to pick you up in a little bit. You can tell them you met me. Your face. It's a mask. Did they hurt you at all? No. They just carried me places. It's not a mask. It's your face. <laughs> Smart kid. Driver, anonymized calling system. Leave a message for Detective Flint giving this location. Drone, predator mode, this location, mantle. <gasps> going? Tell your friends. Tell everyone you meet. You tell them all. When you see me coming, run. Wait, Mr. Knight, this is all real interesting, but you are not a police officer, so you can't just- Officer, I appreciate your perspective, but I'm talking about going underground into the hide of a highly trained killer, which will be where he keeps all his weapons. I'd prefer to do that part for you. What the hell did that all even mean? I wouldn't take it personally, Trent. Yeah, why's that? Because he's special? Because he's better than us? Because he's your weird buddy? Because you're dumb, you have a crappy attitude, and you're gonna be a street police until you die. Only girls cry. Stop it, you're being so emotional. Ryan Trent, you simply did not try hard enough. You don't get to make the rules. Why don't you have a girlfriend, Ryan? Nobody respects you when you do those things. You're going to be a cop while people your age are fighting for freedom? You don't even know what you want. You're going to blow through life like a ghost. You're never going to be good enough, Ryan. Being a cop isn't special. But being a freak with a bag over his head? That's special. That gets respect. I don't even get to do real police work. We let Mr. Knight do the police work. We're just attendants for freak beat lunatics. Well, the hell with that. I'm gonna go do some police work. I'm gonna find out what's so damn special about Mr. Knight. Miss Mikado? This is Detective Trent from the First Precinct. I'm just trying to get up to speed on a file here and... Right. Freak beat. What can you tell me about Moon Knight? Known antagonists. Raul Bushman. Scarlet Fascinara. Carson Knowles. Robert Markham. What? Carson Knowles, AKA Black Spectre. Military veteran, blah, 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 blah. Hmm. Hmm. I need to see the evidence cache from that case with the guy we found in the old vault underground. Here's the number. Sure, 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 sure. I can get you that one. Would you want to say sign it out? <laughs> Come on, 
darts have got to be easier than those dumb moon boomerangs. Not good enough. Not good enough. Marlene Alrani? Ma'am, I'm with S.H.I.E.L.D. I just need to ask you a couple of questions. This is about Moon Knight. I always assumed you people knew something. I'm afraid it is. Just a couple of questions. I have no relationship or association with him anymore. And it's Marlene Fontaine now. But at one time... I'm not going to give you private details. Am I under arrest? No, ma'am. Then all I'll say is this. I was close to... one side of the man. Once. I know he's operating in Manhattan again. I read the news, after all. But he's made no contact with me. I don't expect to ever hear from him again. Is that because he's mentally ill? It's because. Look, you wouldn't have come to me unless you read whatever dossier you keep on him. He died. He came back. I fell in love with the man I thought he came back as. But it turned out that either that man was never really there, or he never really came back from the dead. Jean-Paul Duchamp, hmm? I'm with S.H.I.E.L.D. I just have a couple of questions. Oui, oui, I watch the news. He is back. You were seen working with him more than once. You continued to... Not now. I have not seen him in many years. I am not working with him. I do not believe that anybody is. Really? I watch the news. I have seen the footage of his hilo. What about it? <laughs> I thought you were an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. You cannot recognize a drone when you see it. And that car? that they caught a glimpse of on the local news. It was my husband that spotted it. It doesn't drive like a city car. He works with a drone and a self-driving car, you idiot. He's not working with anyone. And that is just as well. People do not survive working with him. But I will tell you another thing, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. He will never stop. He will go on and on, using up people, spending his bottomless pit of blood money. And he cannot die. So, this guy Knowles, he comes back, and he's crazy, right? He wants to become mayor. He wants to top what his father did and make his wife sorry she ran off with some other guy. But he sees Moon Knight, and he sees a guy who's admired for doing the stage job in disguise. So he loses it. He comes up with his own second identity, Black Spectre. He puts his own crew together like Orani and Duchamp for Moon Knight. And he nearly does it. He nearly kills Moon Knight. He nearly takes over the city. But he was a bad guy. Right. He tries to become the opposite of Moon Knight. His motives are all screwed up. If I became Black Spectre, I could just replace Moon Knight. He doesn't need a crew, so I don't need a crew. He's got some crappy background in mercenary warfare. I'm a goddamn New York City police officer. Can you imagine that old bastard Flint's face when I eventually reveal that the freak beat detective in a mask is really a street cop he disrespected? No more sweeper squad uniform backup duty for me. I'll be on homicide. I'll be wearing a sharp suit in a second. Wait, back up. How do you replace Moon Knight? I'm going to have to kill him. Shouldn't be a thing. Carson Knowles was an idiot. All that time in war zones and he never learned how to plant an IED? <laughs> what? What? You don't know where he lives. You can't just blow him up in his car. Why not? Because it's murder. And you'd have to do it in the city? With people? See, there's another thing too. Moon Knight works alone. No ties. He's technically dead. Ready to go. Intelligent listeners.
listening system has one captured phone conversation for your attention. Police, yes? There's a guy with no face, and he's actually cutting people's faces off. And he's yelling for Moon Knight? He's after you. Come on. Come on. Come on, drive on. <laughs> yes. Damn it. I was sure I wired that other car up properly. Oh well, someone else's problem. I got you though, didn't I? Where's your special powers now? Where did all your moon crap and arrogance get you, huh? Dead. Now I get to be special. I get to be you. This isn't going to be a fight. I'm just going to kill you. I'm better than you. I deserve to be you. And now I'm going to show you why I deserve to be loved more than you. Who the hell are you supposed to be? Black. Black. <laughs> Let me tell you a thing about Black Spectre. He really just wanted to be loved. He wanted his dad and his wife to love him. Wanted his crew to love him. Wanted the whole city to love him. I don't know you. Let me tell you a thing about me. People who love me suffer and die. I never want to be loved. That's why I always win. <laughs> <laughs>